Bal Balmullet and Aidan Elder in Delhi are enjoying it. Second half then, and straight away it is Aidan O'Shea who kicks it forward here inside towards Ender Valley, who got a very, very good point during that first half. Mayo trying to make the best possible start now. And then up to Donegal's woes. There you have Ryan Bradley holding onto the ball too long, conceding a free kick. And an early chance now to put some pressure on that Donegal defence. This is going to be taken by Alan Dillon. Dillon now well, is almost uh, 29, 29 next Friday. So looking for an early birthday present as he kicks this one in dangerously in there. Well fielded at the back there, inevitably by McGee, Neil McGee. Back out towards Mark McHugh. This once again Ryan Bradley. Caught for overholding a few moments ago. Out as far as Kavanaugh, midfielder, alongside Gallagher. Frankie McGlynn hitting it forward there towards Mark McHugh. Chance to play the ball in towards Leo McLoon and a real chance. Well, there was a moment to go there until such time as Aidan O'Shea got back, swung him around. And the referee blows his whistle. A look of inj injured innocence on the face of Aidan O'Shea. No, this time Aidan gets them all wrong, takes them down, but it must be said, Donegal playing into the wind will be able to go back to the style that they're most used to and most comfortable with. And it was noticeable at that time, the McHugh short-hand passing game was very much in evidence leading up to that free in. Colin McFadden then, ready to get the first point of the second half. Goal and three in the opening 35. And it's interesting that uh, three of his four points have come from Freeze. Donegal with two early goals, of course, if he joined us late. First 11 minutes of the first half. Two points from play, one of them by Rand Bradley, the other by Colin McFadden. That's been their lot. So now Mayo with Colin Boyle. Pass fit to play in the last few days. Kevin Kane, who really had his hands full there in the opening minutes of this match when he was marking Michael Murphy. Here's Ender Varley trying to slip away from the challengers, overdoing it eventually, laying the ball off, and the referee has given a free in. And uh, he's lucky to get that one in the end because he almost held on too long, I felt. Yeah, he ran into a bit of traffic here. He got past Paddy McGraw once again. Lacey comes in with a tackle and he more or less was crowded out, lucky enough to get it, but just going back, it was fascinating to watch the kick out that time from Clark out to Colin Boyle. Every single Donegal player retreated back the pitch, so they're going to go back to the defensive mode that we saw last year and that defensive template that served them so well. Killian O'Connor will take this, so they can go point for point, start of the second half, these teams, and just keep three points between them. O'Connor with his fourth. All freeze. Mayo fans still full of hope. It's been a long, long time. 61 years since the San Maguire Cup last went back to County Mayo. Will today be the day? Yeah, big plus for Mayo actually has been the display of Ender Varley in the last while. He has won quite a lot of ball in front of Paddy McGrath. That's hugely encouraging for them. Paul Durkin kicking into the wind and he's done really well. Planting it in midfield. This time it's Mayo with Aidan O'Shea across as far as Lee Keegan. Trying to begin the next Mayo attack. Three players all arriving at once, but there was a push in the back and the referee gives the free kick to Donegal, which is taken by Neil Gallagher. Carol Lacey, McHugh, and the string of hand passes before Rory Cabot eventually carries it deep. Frank McGlynn, Handled with difficulty there by Paddy McPriarty. So a shot come down up the upright earlier on before Colin McFadden got the second goal for Donegal. It's back once again with McGlynn, 45 metres from the target. McGlynn once more. Cohen trying to get in the track tackle, but he doesn't succeed, and that one is beautifully over the bar. Frank McGlynn showing the touches of a, a number 14 and not a number 4. Real predatory instinct here, he's up there, he looks composed, he looks confident, and he hits it over, and he's now got a goal and four points in this year's championship. A real all-star. 
Certainly the impact of that was immense, but lateral play by Donegal, patient play by Donegal, McGlynn making the overlap and having the confidence to shoot another very, very good point. Well, David Walsh is coming in and the player going off is Ryan Bradley. So once again, he is taken off in a Donegal match. And this is so early in the second half, only five minutes in, but David Walsh will probably feel that uh, he has a point to prove and was very luck unlucky in the first place not to make the starting 15. Broken down this time by Barry Morland. We were sitting in the stands last year when uh, Mayo reached the semi-final of the championship, only to be knocked out by Kerry. And Dylan was uh, looking for an extra couple of metres. So now Lee Keegan. Donald Bohan. That's well cut out by a very vigilant Eamon McGee. Line ball. Taken quickly back as far as Lee Keegan. Controlled here by Barry Moran. Mayo looking for scores. A point will do at this stage. He's put it wide. Missed opportunity. Very much so. Good drive by Barry Moran. Needs to be doing more of that. Just shows you what he's capable of if he does get forward. Unlucky a little bit with that, that it went to the wrong side of the post. Still four points between the teams. Donegal have led this match right from the very beginning. Wonderful start for Jim McGuinness there alongside Rory Gallagher. Worst possible opening for James Horan, who will take an awful lot of comfort from the way in which his side battled and battled hard. Big, huge leap in the air. 18 scoring chances created by Mayo against just 12 for Danny Gold. That's a, an interesting statistic. All very well creating the chances, but they haven't been finishing them with uh, the regularity that they would wish. Michael Conroy was pushed in the back, and I think he's telling the referee this has happened more than once before, ref. We just go back to the source of that once more. A great bit of feeling by Barry Moore, the aforementioned Barry Moore that we talked about a moment or two ago. He's definitely has grown into the game as the game has gone on and has started to get the better of, of Neil Gallagher. Well, they were absolutely out of things in the opening 20 minutes in midfield. Mayo winning very, very little possession. And De Barley will kick with that left boot. He's put over one point from play already. Had one free that uh, went up into the air but didn't find the target during the first half. This is one they could do with early stages of the second half, just some seven and a half minutes in. Follows through but doesn't hit with accuracy, and again it's missed. Yeah, I know he's the kicker from the right-hand side because he's a left-footed kicker, but you would just think because of Killian O'Connor's, you know, capabilities at place kicking from any point in the ground that he should take on the responsibility of those. Durkin taking his time. And this time, very cleverly picking out Rory Cavan, who made a drive from midfield. That's a good block. Aidan O'Shea trying to get after Cavan again. Lovely turn by the number nine of Dunny Gall. He's elusive, clever and swift. Nicely forward here. It's Paddy McGrath's up in support. This is David Walsh, his first intervention since coming on as a sub for uh, Ryan Bradley. Four balls straight to Jason Doherty. Mayo need a big contribution from him and from Michael Conroy. And again, a wayward shot, away to the right of the post. Such three bad misses now by Mayo in the space of about five minutes, and suddenly they are on uh, six wides. Yeah, just you know, panicking a little bit when they get the ball, like, trying to take uh, kicks from difficult angles. I know Varley's one from a dead ball should have been finished. That time Conroy had a little bit of support available to him, could have taken the ball in a little bit further, just a little bit more composure would have stood him in good stead. I've seen James Nallen there, one of the selectors, also the runner for Mayo, out there giving a bit of encouragement, perhaps some advice to the... Uh, Mayo forwards just to take the time a bit more and be composed. This time a good catch by Neil Gallagher. That's a very important fetch. Anthony Thompson now, big one up it goes towards McFadden. Well fielded by Kevin Kane, doing neatly out as far as Lee Keegan. Keegan now has an opportunity to run it forward here. Had that dislocated finger during the uh, semi-final which forced him off. This breaks, Barley's after it, touched back by McGlynn. Durkin hits it out. Dangerous moment, good anticipation by Donny Gall at the back, working it out as far as Mark McHugh, on as far as Paddy McBrayer to his uh, pal from Kilcar. 
back it comes again to McHugh. McBrady taking over once more, 19 years of age, youngest player playing in today's final. Here as far as Carol Lacey, held on to it. Neil Gallagher now, 40 metres from the target. They're very short in their passes, but they're holding on to the possession, protecting the football, guarding it and being careful about where they deliver it. That was David Walsh going after it again after Keith Higgins got a fingertip to it. It's still Danny Gall and it's still Carol Lacey. How will this finish up? It's Michael Murphy eventually taking on the responsibility and that one is going away to the left-hand side and it's a missed opportunity. Breeze against him. Yeah, missed opportunity for Donegal. Great defending though, it must be said by Mayo, forcing Donegal wide. But this game is very much in the balance. Even though there's four points in it, you can see that both sides putting everything into it. And just that little bit of composure that would make the difference between winning and losing is absent with both sides at the moment. They haven't looked like getting one, but uh, what a goal would do for Mayo were they to get one. David Clark into midfield again. It's the towering figure there of Neely Gallagher going up, just as he did in the semi-final against Cork. Wonderful performance in midfield to Murphy. That time a high challenge. This time it's by Donald Vaughan. He's got to be careful. He's yellow carded already. Referee looked at it, and uh, Vaughan was able to walk away. Slung around. Needs to be disciplined. Needs to be disciplined. But just the last two kickouts. You know we've talked about the tussle between Neil Gallagher and Barry Moore. And that time it was between Neil Gallagher and Aidan O'Shea. But Gallagher is starting to show the form that he had in the semi-final against Cork. Two great catches under severe pressure. It's going to be another change, and Martin McElhenney is going to come on for Danny Gall. That's number 17 there, and the player is going to be replaced is going to be Paddy McBrearty. So the youngster is going to come off, and uh, another player who is strong, forceful, able to play half forward or midfield is about to come on. But before that happens, looks like Danny Gall are going to take their free kick. Michael Murphy standing over it. whose dad, Mick, comes from County Mayo and is watching his son, but I'm sure Mick, the dad, is watching Michael and uh, cheering on for him, cheering him on at this stage, and cheering for Danny Gall as he kicks it from 45 metres. Beautiful kick, wonderfully executed to go with the goal he got after three minutes. And it's now 2-7 to eight points. And this is that phase in the match now where Danny Gall will be hoping to tighten the nut on uh, Mayo, squeeze them as best they can and try and ensure that in the home straight they have a decent lead as Paddy McBrady comes off and Martin McElhenney comes, comes on. Yeah, I think in the Australian rules they call it the moving quarter and there's no doubt about it that Donegal have gone into moving quarter mode in the, at, at this moment. Got a couple of nice scores. I like that to the three misses that Donegal have. You know, it's just giving Donegal that bit more confidence. This is Varley, 